Discover the mysterious secret of Archangel Michael proven to break open an ocean of abundance, heavenly wealth and divine wisdom. And all you need is this four-sentence prayer. Hi, this is Amanda Ross. Let me tell you a startling secret. The car accident caused by a fight with my husband was the greatest blessing of my life. Now why would I say such a thing? You see. I'm about to share a mind-blowing story with you. Of how this tragedy was really the unexpected key to manifesting unbelievable, jaw-dropping miracles on command, making you one with the divine essence. An astonishing discovery that will help you dwell in the realm of the wondrous. Imagine swimming in an ocean of abundance, joy and love, washing away the stench of guilt, shame and all that other yucky stuff. Because the supernatural secret that was uncovered in ancient Babylonian tomes, simply mesmerized me. An unveiling of angelic delights that has allowed people to find their celestial twin flames. Yes, I now have the fairy tale marriage of my dreams. While I magnetically attract and manifest my deepest desires, even the closely held ones I'd forgotten I had as a child. All by just uttering four simple sentences. Before that, let me flat out ask you. Do you want to manifest the most glorious life, attracting a giddying downpour of heavenly gifts? Enjoy freedom from all this pressing problems? The empty wallet issues as bills mount up. The relationship strain with no solution in sight. The relentless assault of anxiety and depression. And yet for some reason, you can't shake these troubles off. Like an annoying snapping turtle that slammed its jaws on your palm. Even as you frantically wave, you still can't get the whippersnapper off. Let me assure you. It's not your fault. And here's why. That's because of the key tenets for the law of attraction that you may know. What you focus on expands. Simply put. If you have focus on positive things, positive things will come your way. You vibrate at a higher frequency and thus you receive higher vibration blessings. Easy right? However, here's a massive problem. Your brain is wired for negativity. It's simply the natural state. This means you can't help but attract low vibration things. Horrors like. Always falling sick. Getting into yet another relationship drama. Suffocated by a blanket of loneliness. Never ending phone calls from creditors. A perpetual attack of anxiety, fear and depression. No matter how hard you try, your brain is wired to be like quicksand. Pulling you down in the abyss the more you struggle. In a bit, I'll show you the science behind it. In the meantime. Does that sound hopeless? What can you do? Should you just give up on an exhilarating existence? The answer is a resounding no. Because here's the good news. There's a startling principle called, vibrational wings. Contained in the dusty annals of ancient sacred scriptures. It's a hidden mythical mantra that acts like a magic jetpack. You simply need to strap it on. And then. You will be nearly immediately launched into a permanent high vibration state, and stay there without ever coming down ever again. You're like an angel flying in the air. Those low vibration troubles and worries? Gone. Left in the pit where it belongs. With just a few spoken words. You nearly automatically become a high vibration person who effortlessly attract all the good things in life, the easy finances, the perfect health, the slim body, the sizzling relationships, the angelic wisdom. I know that probably sounds audacious, but bear with me. However, with the vibrational wings secret I'm about to show you, you have the astounding capacity to change your DNA, yes, no kidding, transform your mind. Instantly make you a better person. It's almost like a brain transplant. Albeit taking a few seconds without the mess of surgery. Best of all, it's backed by both science and the supernatural. Are you starting to get inspired yet? So let me tell you what happened after the terrible accident, and the unbelievable miracles that transpire. The crash was bad. Real bad. Oddly enough, all I had was a few bruises on my body. I felt guilt. After all, did me saying hurtful things help cause this tragedy? Yet my poor husband got the brunt of it. And he was lying bruised and broken on a hospital bed. With a beeping machine. Every time I looked at his purple beaten face, I was instantly filled with a searing sense of shame. Was it true I didn't love him? 
Was I careless in my words? Did I cause all this? Upon deep reflection, I realize that wasn't the case. While he had a few bad habits, he was a kind man at the very core. After all, I did marry him. I vowed. If he ever recovers, I'll make sure things will be different this time round. A fresh start. Then. Something happened that brought my good intentions crashing back to earth. Iota received a phone call from a number that instantly caused me to have chills shooting down my spine. It was my landlord. And we have avoided his calls for weeks. I realized it wasn't good form to keep doing that, so I picked up the phone sheepishly. And what I heard caused my spirit to shrink. To my dismay, I learned my husband did not pay rent for nearly three months. And if we don't do anything, we'll be evicted in 11 days. Three young kids, a husband in the hospital, me being a homemaker with no other source of income. What horrible timing. My head spinned at the bad news. Before I could collapse helplessly in tears, I left the hospital to gather my thoughts and breathe in some fresh air. And then, something remarkable happened. It's this very thing that can empower you to manifest miraculous turnarounds for your crazy situations at will. Manifest freedom from anxiety and depression, nearly instantly manifest the most loving, fulfilling relationships, with no more disappointment. After walking aimlessly for a few minutes, I came across a rinky-dinky second-hand bookstore. The rundown signboard said. Heaven on Earth. That struck me as funny, since it looked so dilapidated. A curious historical oddity amongst all the modern streets. Pearly gates with streets of gold, this ain't. And here's the crazy thing, I'd never seen it before. Yet. I was absolutely drawn to go in. It was almost like it possessed a magnetic attraction. Beyond possessing swollen eyes drenched with tears, I wasn't even much of a reader, at that time. As if I was following a prompting by the universe, I'd entered. Amidst the old, dusty tomes. Manning the counter, I saw a handsome blonde young man dressed in this weird color of cobalt blue. Here I was thinking. What is such a good-looking man like this, with such radical fashion sense and chiseled good looks, working in a dead-end job as a second-hand bookstore clerk? He looked up, smiled and said. What's your name, dear? Immediately after he spoke, I was stunned. His booming bassy voice contained compassion like I never heard, yet a fierceness like a battle-worn warrior. He had bright blue eyes with a kind yet knowing twinkle. Realizing my silence was a little rude, I collected myself and answered. Oh. My name is Amanda. Hi Amanda, it's nice to meet you. My name is Michael, how can I help? Before I could respond a lame excuse like, just looking, thanks, he volunteered. Something tells me you're not here to buy some books. I'm usually a private person. But for some reason, I don't know if it was his voice, his caring manner or those eyes of intense fiery attention, like I'm the most valuable person on earth. I started pouring my guts out. Accompanied by white, hot tears. About the accident. About my husband in a coma. About my failure as a wife and mother. How we had this crazy debt. How we were going to be kicked out of our home. Michael listened attentively. I blushed with humiliation. Oh my, here I am talking your ear off. Michael said it was okay. He then said, don't you worry. Everything will turn out all right. He continued. You know something, whenever I'm in trouble, I say this simple phrase and then almost instantly, I get bailed out. You want to hear it? I nodded in agreement. I call it the prayer of Daniel. It goes something like this. Hear O oh God my prayers. Look in favor at my pain. Hear and act. Don't delay for I bear your name. At this point I figured I had nothing to lose. I scrawled those words into a piece of paper that was floating around. I thanked him and left. However, just as I was about to go, Michael gave some really strange parting words. Your family will save you. Now, before I go into why those weird words totally rocked my world. Michael mentioned the prayer of Daniel. But did you know something remarkable about prayer? Prayer is scientifically proven to put you in a theta state far quicker than anything else on earth. Yes, even meditation. 
The theta state is the high vibration state where you start attracting the good things in life. These include the ability to unleash that massive dormant potential that lies within you, enabling you to achieve more than you ever thought possible. Release a gushing river of peace. Come dip and cleanse yourself of the sorrows that stain you. Set crystal clear intention to the universe. So you'll get every single one of your heart's desires, no matter how small. You see, here's the unvarnished truth. In a Queensland Brain Institute study done on March 26, 2016 conducted at the University of Queensland, researchers found that when they measured the brain waves of the test group, they entered theta even faster than the monks. Are you starting to see how prayer can launch you into the zone of the extraordinary where the impossible is made possible, nearly instantly? I didn't know how significant this scientific fact was until a little later. Now back to the story. Even though the prayer of Daniel seemed unusual, I prayed those words anyway. Hear O oh God my prayers. Look in favor at my pain. Hear and act. Don't delay for I bear your name. Almost instantly, something remarkable happened. I received a phone call from the landlord, who apologized and said he was harsh in judging the situation after hearing about the accident. And if I can pay one month instead of three, he'll let us remain. Was that divine coincidence? Again. I prayed this prayer over and over again like a mantra. And more miracles manifested out of the blue. Hear O oh God my prayers. Look in favor at my pain. Hear and act. Don't delay for I bear your name. The next day. My husband roused from his coma. His initial words was, I'm sorry for being such an idiot, and we hugged for a long, long time, with tears streaming down our faces. Hear oh God my prayers. Look in favor at my pain. Hear and act. Don't delay for I bear your name. After hours of the most intimate heart-to-heart -heart chats, I did my usual lottery run at the nearby convenience store. For some reason this time, instead of putting in my lucky numbers, I decided to put all my children's ages, again like a force guiding me. My oldest temperamental teen was Tyler. He is 13. Then there was the middle child Aaron. He was 7. Finally, there was my youngest sweetheart Ashley, she was 3. So my numbers were. 030713 I thought nothing of it as I was already enjoying such an intensely pleasurable life. Anything beyond this is an extravagant bonus. However, as per habit, I prayed the prayer again. Now, why not you try it? Come say it with me. Hear O oh God my prayers. Look in favor at my pain. Hear and act. Don't delay for I bear your name. Do you feel something stirring? Are you starting to feel a shoulder tap from the universe, as if it's saying? Wait till you see the wonderful gifts I have in store for you. You ain't seen nothing yet. Your breakthrough is just around the corner. Even now, you're starting to see how powerful this four-sentence mantra is. In a minute, I'll share why that's the case. But first. Let me share something even more incredible that happened. Five days after our marriage reconciliation, I checked my lottery numbers on my smartphone, as per my habit. I had to pick my jaw off the ground. Holy smokes. I'd won. Not the first prize, mind you. It was fourth place, which was already an astounding development. However, here's why it was especially remarkable. I won a startling $97,587.47. That was the exact amount of our household debt, to the red cent. That was uncanny. I felt the universe beaming over me, like a mother to a newborn. Fully convinced the prayer of Daniel was working, I dashed back to the second-hand bookshop where I met Michael to tell him the good news. To my surprise, in place of the second-hand bookshop there was a laundromat. There was no trace of the bookshop, nor of Michael. It then dawned on me. I was talking to an angel? and his strange words. Your family will save you, were the numbers I used, unconsciously, and won the lottery? I got really shocked. After all, I learned soon after that Archangel Michael is the angel that God sends when people is in trouble. The one that bails you out in crisis situations. And here's the unbelievable part, guess who's Michael's favorite human? It was the prophet Daniel from Babylonian times. 
Now, what I'm about to share with you about Daniel will shock you, because you're about to discover how to create a personality transplant, even when you're far from the person you want to be how to remain at peace and even confident in times of adversity and difficulty how to spark a domino effect of blessings whichever way you turn however, as promised earlier. I'm going to share with you the science behind the quicksand mind and how prayer is the single most powerful way to soar above it. In a 1998 Ohio State University study done by John Cacioppo, Ph.D., he showed people pictures known to arouse positive feelings, say, a Ferrari, or a pizza, those certain to stir up negative feelings, a mutilated face or dead cat, and those known to produce neutral feelings, a plate, a hair dryer. Meanwhile, he recorded electrical activity in the brain's cerebral cortex. The brain reacted more strongly to stimuli it deems negative. There was a greater surge in electrical activity. Thus, our attitudes are more heavily influenced by downbeat news than good news. There's a good reason why. Our capacity to weigh negative input so heavily most likely evolved for a good reason, to keep us out of harm's way. From the dawn of human history, our very survival depended on our skill at dodging huge predators that can swallow us whole. But now, we're not living in a reality where we'll get eaten by a saber-toothed tiger. Yet, the brain hasn't caught up. This means because of that negative wiring, your brain can't help but invite disaster into your life. That's why there's so much bad news on TV. Because human beings can't help but invite the nasty things in life to invade. So no matter what you do, you are conditioned to taking the lower vibration route. That's why despite trying so hard, you're still broke. That's why despite meditating so often, your relationships still suck. That's why despite immersing yourself in binaural beats, you're still stuck in the same sorry place. Your mind can be your worst enemy and here's the main issue, all those other practices? The binaural beats. The affirmations. The guided meditations. While it gets you in theta state, although temporarily. Once you're done, you're going to snap back to your original state. As a result, you're going to get a roller coaster of results. Good when your mind is in theta state. Bad when your mind isn't. So here's some great news. What if I told you prayer doesn't help you quickly vibrate at high frequency, it can help you stay there forever? Sounds a little unbelievable, right? Yet, research has shown that prayer can bend reality, change your DNA and rewire your brain, the foundations for true permanent change of state. Here's three scientifically backed powers of prayer on how it helps you ascend to the dimension of unconditional love, light and delight, without ever coming down to bitter reality. 1. Prayer can bend reality you read that right, it's like a Jedi mind trick. In a 2008 study published by Explore, the Journal of Science and Healing, Dr. Dean Radin a neurotheology researcher took five experienced praying people and five normal control subjects and asked them to mentally interfere with a laser beam pointed at a light reading CCD sensor inside a sealed box. Guess what? The praying people blocked the laser light compared to non-meditators and control runs. In other words, your mind can indeed overcome matter. With the focused intention of prayer, you can change previously hopeless circumstances. It's just one step away from your problems and pain. Not only that. 2. It can transform your DNA The Institute of Harmath, an internationally recognized non-profit research organization conducted a study called Local and Non-Local Effects of Coherent Heart Frequencies on Conformational Changes of DNA. This study showed that thinking and feeling anger, fear, and frustration caused DNA to change shape according to thoughts and feelings. The DNA responded by tightening up and becoming shorter, switching off many DNA codes, which reduced quality expression. This means when we choose to engage toxic thoughts, for example, unforgiveness, bitterness, irritation, or feelings of not coping, we change the DNA and subsequent genetic expressions, which then changes the shape of our brain wiring in a negative direction. No wonder we develop quicksand brains. However, the flip side holds the real key. When you adopt a positive attitude, the good choice, rewired everything back to the original healthy positive state. These scientists basically proved prayer, which is reinforced positive thinking, open up our DNA codes. And remove stress once and for all. But here's the most potent reason. 3. 
It can rewire your brain for the miraculous on a bright spring day in 1998, at Andrew Newberg's laboratory, the neuroscientist settles revered Scott McDermott in a darkened examination room and asks the pastor to pray for someone else. A few minutes later, at the moment Newberg believes McDermott has reached the peak of his prayer, the researcher injects the minister with a dye that shows the blood flow in his brain. Now it's time for Newberg to take a peek at McDermott's neural connections, sliding him into a SPECT scanner, which will create an image of which parts of McDermott's brain lit up and which went dark while he prayed. A few minutes later, Newberg has preliminary results on his computer screen. He notes some areas of increased activity in the frontal lobes, which handle focused attention. In other words, his brain defaulted to the positive. In other words, there was no other reality in his brain but one of love, peace and healing. The dark side didn't even exist. There was simply no room for negativity. In other words, prayer changes the wiring of the brain for oneness with the universe. So there's no going back. Are you starting to be convinced yet? As a friendly warning. Most other manifestation strategies are like a chicken trying to defy gravity. In the movie Chicken Run, the hero needed to cross a fence. As he couldn't fly, he built a bike that took him across the barrier. While that was the heartwarming reality, the main issue was no matter what he did. He will still plummet to Earth. After all, a chicken can only do so much, because their very nature is still chicken. They will not defy gravity. This is like your brain with the negativity bias. However, what if I told you it's far easier to be rather than do? What if instead of being a chicken, you're an eagle instead? Won't it be easier to fly? Won't it be simpler to soar above the stratosphere? So instead of trying and toiling, you can just spread your wings and just get to that next level? That's what prayer can do. It can change your chicken brain to an eagle brain. Like I said earlier, it can even change your DNA. When your state is transformed, you can't help but be an amazing person. You can't help but be grateful. You can't help but achieve your soul purpose. You can't help but take charge of your life and seize every golden opportunity that comes your way. Here's another way to look at it. You're like a caterpillar who became a butterfly. The butterfly cannot go back to becoming a caterpillar, no matter how hard it tries. In the same way, once you go through prayer, you'll transform like a butterfly, with vibration wings, to help you fly to a stratospheric future. The change is irreversible. You're never going back. Never going back to the pain. Never going back to the hurt. Never going back to the depression. Never going back to the sickness. Never going back to the poverty. Isn't that brilliant news? However, here's the issue. Prayer is powerful, but what you pray for matters equally as well. Think of prayer as a tool like a hammer. However, you need nails for a hammer to work. The content of those prayers are those nails. Nails that will help you get the breakthroughs you want. So coupled with the DNA altering, theta state inducing and mind rewiring power of prayer, I looked into the book of Daniel as nails and started using the prayer hammer to hit away. As a result, I looked into why this obscure biblical figure was so powerful and why he was the object of Archangel Michael's affection. It became my life quest. As things stabilized. As my marriage improved and money kept on flowing in, I dedicated my life's work to the study of Daniel and his amazing life. This is why the prayer of Daniel is so effective. From prisoner to the palace, the amazing life of the prophet Daniel his life story was interesting. He started off as a slave in 620 BC, a Jewish captivity of Babylon. However in a mere few years, he ended up a higher rank in the courts, and even ended up the right hand of King Nebuchadnezzar, the most powerful man of his day. Now imagine that. How many prisoners do you know end up a prince? Usually, if someone is a POW, they will end up in chains until rescued. Or tortured. Or killed. They will not usually end up in the good graces of the ruler and end up co-ruling the country. It just doesn't happen. So why did these astonishing things happen to Daniel? It's because of his prayer. After all, even a prestigious institution like Harvard University has concluded that by just a few words of prayer, you can affect change. 
In the research of scientist Herbert Benson, MD, who has spent decades studying the effects of prayer on people with medical conditions. Benson claims that the repetitive effects of certain phrases or words for this for reducing stress, giving hope and promoting healing. This means that because of Daniel's repetitive use of a few sentences, he transformed his reality. Because of merely repeating a few sentences, Daniel went from slave to superior. Are you starting to see the power yet? Now how about you? Daniel was a Babylonian slave that broke free. What things are holding back that the prayers of Daniel can solve? Don't you want to go from refugee to royalty? Don't you want to go? From being overlooked to being a somebody. From being sick to whole. From being unloved to loved. But wait, this is when it gets better. Thanks to his prayers, Daniel too ended up living a high vibration life of miracles. For instance, he survived the lion's dens. Are you stuck in a hostile environment? That there are enemies like your creditors, toxic relatives and mounting bills attacking you? The prayers of Daniel can help you not just survive but end up in a better position than you ever did before. His friends survived being thrown into a raging furnace. How many of you have fires you need to put out? Does your crises seem never-ending and relentless? The prayers of Daniel can help you quench the most fiery of circumstances, bringing love, peace and joy when there was none. He interpreted the dreams of the ruler. How many of you want the power to reap the full wisdom of your dreams? Do you have life decisions that puzzle you? And you need some help from the angels? The prayers of Daniel can shine a light on those enigmatic dreams and give you the laser-accurate answers you so crave. He transformed the destiny of the nation. So, national affairs may not be your cup of tea. However, this proves how invincible the prayers of Daniel are. How much more life-changing can uttering a few words be? How awesome would it be if you could eliminate your generational trauma? Or trample the most challenging of obstacles? How much of a relief will it be if you don't need to pay for the sins of the fathers anymore? As I continued the prayer of Daniel, abundant blessings hunted me down like a pack of happy puppies. Then one day, something marvelous happened. I walked the street where that laundromat was. I just felt led there. To my utter surprise, the second-hand bookstore was there again. That cheesy run-down sign was still there. Heaven on Earth. Seeing it as a divine opportunity, I'd immediately dashed in. Again, I saw the man in the cobalt blue top. This time round, his face was glowing, radiant even. It was as if since I'd discovered his identity, he didn't to conceal his true angelic form. With a kind, firm voice, he asked me how I was. Again, I volunteered all kinds of information, like the times before. The difference of course, is everything now was awesome. I spilled out on how loving my marriage was, how much more healthy I was, how wealthy we got to be, we'd even bought a new house with nearly purely cash, how we didn't have debt. Again, Michael nodded, this time with a Cheshire-like grin on his face. He then said, 